in der Ampis TV. Oh. here gathered together and we're ready to get started, aren't we? MashaAllah. You know, we've been talking about the prophets in Islam. And we've talked about some of the basic things to understand. We discussed the subject of how we can know if somebody's really a prophet. Is there any real proof for that? Then we found out some clear evidences. Another thing we found out is the similarities in the prophets. They always bring one message, a clear message that there really is one God And all your love and all your worship and everything you do, you do for him. But we found out that some of the things are also different about the prophets, didn't we? We found out that they live at different times, a little bit difference in their languages. We also found out that they lived in different situations, cultures and circumstances, things that happened to them. But today I thought maybe we could discuss something that happened way back at the very beginning of the time of Adam, alayhi salam. Remember when we say any prophet's name, like Jesus, like Moses, like Abraham, we always say alayhi salam or peace be upon him. And with that I want to go back to talk about Adam, alayhi salam. And you know, when he was first created, Allah created him from dirt. Now, dirt, as we know, is all over the earth, isn't it? And dirt is many colors. You can look at dirt. It might have some brown in it. It might have some orange. It might have different, you know? And so, all the people of the earth today are also different colors, aren't they? Isn't that interesting? And Allah made Adam from a kind of clay. We call it sounding clay. You know what it means? It means that when they work with it, it makes a sound. That's strange. But we don't call... In Arabic, we don't say people are human beings. In Arabic, we say they are, what? Insan. And that's some of the things that we'll talk about today, too. Why we're called insan. Now, let us go back and see. Here's Adam. And imagine it. Here is Adam. And we discussed he was so big. Do you know how big Adam was? He was so tall, bigger than a building. He was very tall. And he tried to talk to the angels, you know, because there were angels at his time. But they were busy. They're always worshiping Allah. Maybe he would talk to them and he'd go, yeah, yeah, whatever, and then back to worshiping Allah. So he was lonely. And one of the things that had happened, Allah told Adam to give names to everything. Allah had already told the angels, you know, if you know anything, tell me the names of all the things I've created. The angels said, we don't know anything. How will we know anything if you didn't give us the knowledge? But when Allah told Adam, give names to everything, Adam named everything. Yep, and after that, 
experience, I guess, he was pretty tired, huh? He lay down and he fell asleep. Allah made him fall asleep. And during his sleep, Allah did something. Allah took the bone of Adam, which is the short bone from the ribs. And then Allah made that bone have skin on it and flesh. And then eventually it became what? It became Eve. That was the first woman was made from the bone of Adam. Did you imagine that? So Adam woke up, you know, he's like, Hey, who are you? You weren't here before. He said, that's right. He said, where did you come from? She said, I came from you. From me? And when he realized, he said, hmm. So then he told her her name. He said, you are Hawa. Now the angels are going, hey, how come you called her Hawa? He said, because she's created from something alive. And Hawa in Arabic is from the same word as Hai. And Allah is al Hai, which means what? Always alive. Eternally alive. That is the name of Allah. Because he never dies. So she's called Hawa, which means alive. So women are coming from the same place men are coming from. We're all coming from the same place. Allah told us in the Quran, Ya ayyulun nasa taqarabukum alayhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidi wa khalaqam minha zawjaha wa bitha rijalan kathirin wa nisa. And that's the meaning of what I'm telling you right now. That he said, O oh, human beings, you're coming all from this source. And he says to us, O oh, human beings, have taqwa for Allah, for your Lord. And Allah is the one who created all of you from one single person. Who? Adam. And from him created his mate, Hawa. We call her Eve, too. And from these two, Allah brought forth many men and many women. It's important for us to know this because just like we need to know that men have responsibilities and things they have to do, also women have responsibilities and things they have to do, too. Now, another subject that comes up with this is called knowledge. Because one of the amazing things about Adam, and all of us too, is the ability to learn. I don't guess there's anything else on the whole entire planet Earth, really, that has the ability to learn like a human being. We can learn so much and understand so much. And this is something, I mean, all the way back from Adam. Allah gave that to us, this desire, if you will, or love. I want to know more. I want to know more. So sometimes we hear stories and we want to hear more, more. Why? Because inside of you, there's something saying, get some more knowledge, get some more knowledge. But then the important thing to do is to know how to use your knowledge, isn't it? The first knowledge all of us have is the knowledge about ourselves. And we found from the story of Adam, he had knowledge about himself. He had knowledge about the bone that came from him that became his wife. He had understanding. Then the next kind of knowledge that we need to have is the knowledge about the one who created us. Where did we come from? Did we make ourselves? No. That's kind of dumb, isn't it? No, but it had to be from God, Allah Almighty. He created all of us. So if we know that and we said he created us, this is a good kind of knowledge. Now, there are some people that deny it. They say, no, everything happened by accident. Some people say we came from monkeys. <laughs> pretty good. When you consider, if we came from monkeys, how come we still have monkeys today? Hmm? So, obviously, we as Muslims, we don't believe that silliness. However, there are people who believe that. They don't want to believe in God. They want to believe in the monkey idea. Again, though, the prophets gave us enough information for us to understand that there really is God. We really came from Adam. And one of the things that we talked about early program, we said that in every country in the world, in every language in the world, the name for the first man is Adam. Now, how could it be all over the earth, even in China, even in Russia, Switzerland, Norway, Sweden, Spain, Africa, 
America, Australia, everybody's saying Adam. It's not a coincidence. It's because human beings know where they came from. And none of them said the first man was named Monkey. <laughs> The second knowledge is, after yourself, is to know your Lord. What do we know about Allah? Well, we know Allah is the Creator. That's very important to know. But what else do we know about Allah? Well, Allah is very fair. Very, very fair. He gives everybody a good chance. We mentioned that yesterday. He keeps giving people a chance. That's why He sends prophets to us. Because they give us a good chance. They'll tell you, don't do this, don't do that, do this, that, and so and so. And all of this gives us a chance to learn more and to do more to make Allah happy with us. Then I was thinking, what other knowledge? Well, there's another kind of knowledge. The third kind of knowledge is called the knowledge of the dunya. Dunya, this is an Arabic word, which means everything in the world, the worldly things. Now today, there's no doubt that the human beings are looking all over the dunya, the worldly things, for information, knowledge, and they want to Use it. Put it to work. Hmm? Like, how can we get more energy? We need to move cars and airplanes and things around. Where will we get this energy? And this is knowledge. And how will we have better food and more of it? And how can we get water from the ground and use it properly? All of these things are knowledge that we need. And you see us working with that. But it's dangerous if we forget the other kinds of knowledge that we have. Because if we only think about the matters of the world we will forget about the matters of ourselves, the proper things that we need for ourselves, and especially our need to know about our Lord, our Creator, which is Allah. We are doing pretty well, but I feel certain areas need attention. Firstly, no counting machines for more efficient operation. And the top brands available are Delarue, NCL, and Class. Mm -hmm. We must shred our waste confidential documents. The most reliable paper shredders are of Rexel and Face It. We're spending a lot of man hours preparing regular mails every month. DFE has the most efficient bulk mailing system. That's very good. When can we have a list of all the suppliers? We don't need a list, sir. No list. Just one name. IED. Time saved is money saved. Islam ne pehla kalma hi Quran Sharif ka batata hai. कि नहीं है इबादत के काबिल सिवाय परमात्मा के और कोई ला इल्ला इल्लिल्ला मोहम्मद रसूल अल्लाह धर्म में है एक और ब्रह्म द्वितीय और नास्ति एक अमीव द्वितीय ब्रह्म ला इल्ला इल्लिल्ला ये धर्म कहता है ये संदेश दिशियों मुनियों ने दिया और यही संदेश हमारे मोहम्मद साहब ने इस पैगाम को हमको दिया तो हम भेदभाव क्यों करें और मैं इस समय सारी दुनिया में एक कुरान पहुंचेगा तो सारी दुनिया में सारी दुनिया में शांति होगी सारी दुनिया में अमन होगा Not a single African tribe ever worshipped images before the white man came. Not one. They all worshipped God. Ahmad Didan. Different, different name, but the concept, same. Islamic, Islamic, Islamic. He's a Muslim. He doesn't know. He's got the wrong label on. The Christian has Christianized him and make them to worship Jesus Christ. We have done nothing. Did. Islam in Africa in Man with a Mission. Coming soon on Peace TV. These prophets, when they come, the main thing they stressed to us was to know our Lord. Because most people are going to use their knowledge about themselves. You will do that. You wake up in the morning, you want to know... Okay, I need to brush my teeth. I need to take care of, put my clothes. I, you know, things I have to do. This is self-knowledge. Also, how to take care of myself. Maybe I need to relax. Maybe I need to sleep. Maybe I need to just, like, chill out, something like that. All of those things that most people do take care of. And, of course, I already mentioned that we're taking care of the matters of the world. Things that I want, like get money, get education, have a big house, have a nice car. Those are worldly things. 
But when we forget about the most important thing, is the knowledge of our Lord, then we're going to have a big problem. I'll give an example why. In some countries today that I visited, I found that people, they don't want to believe anything anymore. They just gave up. They don't refer to their prophets anymore. They don't think about that. They just want to believe, as we talked about this idea, everything comes by accident. So what do you think happened? When they get what they want, they're very happy. Very happy. They want a job. They want money. They want a house. They want position. They want power. When they get it, they're very happy. They like to dance. They like to sing. They like to make music. and Go crazy. And they're happy, happy, happy. Until what? Until they don't have it anymore. Then what happens? Then they become very sad. Or very angry. Yeah? So here's something that you could think about. What will happen if you live in a place that will take care of you? Some countries, they will take care of people who get in that shape. You don't have money anymore. They said, okay, you don't need any money. We'll just let you stay in housing. Oh, okay, so I don't need to worry. And then if I get sick, don't worry. The government will take care of your health. So you said, okay, I don't need to worry about that. And then what, you know, if you need education, you don't have any money, don't worry, we're going to send you to school. So the more that the society or the group of people you live in, the more they take care of each other like that. This is a nice thing. It really is nice. But if the people begin to depend on that and they forget about their creator, they forget about their Lord, the one who created them, then what will happen? I'm going to show you something. Think about this. So people start to think that the government is going to do everything or society is going to take care of them. Now, what happens? They lose their job. They say, okay, you take care of me. Government said, today we don't have any money. Huh? We can't take care of you today. We don't have any money. Oh, now what will they do? Or they'll say, well, you can't keep the big house. You have to move to a small house. Oh, I don't want to be in a small house. Well, you can't have your car anymore now. You have to take your car. You can ride the bus. Oh, I don't want to ride the bus. And I'm sick. Well, we'll give you treatment, but you have to wait a few weeks. But I'm sick now. Nope, too bad. We don't have enough money. So then the people become unhappy with the situation. They be very unhappy with it. So they start thinking, what can I do? I don't like this life. I don't get what I want. And even the people who have money don't always get what they want. When you have money... Doesn't always make you happy. No, because still I want this, I want that, but I'm still not happy. So then some people, they will start to drink alcohol. They will take drugs. They will do bad things, trying to find happiness. But they won't find it like that. They can't find it. They're looking outside for happiness, and they don't find it. Then what happens? Then eventually some people, they get so angry, so mean, they start hurting people. They start doing bad things because they can't find this happiness. Until finally, some people, they will even kill themselves. I was in one country. The people told me that in their country, they were the first ones to reject religion, just kick out religion. I said, oh, you don't like religion? They said, nah, most people here, we don't want to believe in God. They said, and guess what else? I said, what else? They said, we're number one in the world for people who commit suicide, people who kill themselves. I said, what? People kill themselves? And you have the most people killing themselves? They said, yes. I said, think about this. Have you just said that your country is the place where most people kill themselves? And you said people don't believe anything here. Why don't you make a connection here and figure it out? Because when you don't have money, you don't have the power, you don't have the things you want in this life, there's a place you can go and get what you need. You know where? Inside your heart. Because if you believe in God, if you believe in Allah, you go inside your heart and you talk to God in your heart. Did you know that? You can talk to God in your heart. Direct. Because that's what the prophets taught us to do. You don't have to have a rock or a stone or a stick or a bone or something like this that you can turn to to ask. Now, some people think that they can have like a, a lucky charm it will bring them good luck. Have you heard about this? Yes. In my country, I, you know I'm from Texas, right? In Texas, many people, they like the idea of a horseshoe. And they said the shoe from the horse. You see the shoe from the horse? It's not really a shoe. It's just a piece of metal, isn't it? And it goes kind of like a U. They said this is good luck. And in some places, they 
put it like this on the wall and they say it catches all the good stuff. Yeah, in other places they put it like this and they said, no, it makes stuff come down that's good. And I said, you guys can't even make up your mind. Why don't you turn it this way? <laughs> but anyway, I was thinking, if it's such good luck, what about the horse that's walking around with only three shoes? Because you've got his other shoe on the wall. And then some people said a rabbit's foot is good luck. Did you ever hear about that? A rabbit's foot is good luck. And some people used to put the foot of a rabbit, a real rabbit's foot, on a chain and carry it, like, for good luck. I said, well, it sure wasn't good luck for the rabbit, was it? <laughs> Can you imagine this? <laughs> Here is a rabbit going on crutches, right? Man, them guys and their luck. <laughs> well, anyway, the prophets, when they came, were telling us how to get the right kind of knowledge, use it the right way, and then it's a benefit for you here, and it's a benefit for you in the next life. Because this, for sure, the life you're in right now, you're going to die. Nobody is going to get away from that. Every person who is born has already died or they will die. And Allah told us about this in the Quran. He said, Kulu nafsin da ikatil mot. Every single soul will taste death. All of us are going to die. But what's important is to know what to do here so when you go to the next world, you're prepared for it. Make sense? Okay. I want you to think now. When a person dies, what's going to happen? Can you guess? Not really. You need to have somebody to tell you. But how can somebody come back after they die? They can't come back and tell you. They left. They can't come back. Some people, by the way, they think that the spirit of somebody dead came back and talked to them. They call it a ghost. Have you heard about a ghost? You heard about spirits? Huh? Yes. Have you? Yes. Yeah. And they said, oh, yeah. Uh, somebody's dead mother came back or the grandfather came back and was telling them this and that and moving chairs around, all kinds of stuff. That they but we came to know that in reality, this is not spirits from a dead person. It's the jinn. Remember the jinn we talked about? Yeah. yeah. The jinn were created after Allah created angels. Angels, I'll give you a little review. Angels are created from light. Jinn are created from a fire without smoke, and humans are created from the earth. All right? Now, can we see light? No, we can't. You can only see what light reflects off of. So we don't see the angels, unless Allah wants us to. Same thing is for the jinn, because there's no smoke with the fire. It's a pure fire. You don't see it. So for the most part, we don't see the jinn either, unless Allah lets it. So sometimes when people are seeing these spirits or hearing these voices talking to them blah, 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 in the ear, that's not God talking to them. That's not even angels talking to them. Who is talking to them? The jinn, the shaitan, the devils, going, whis was, whis was, whis was, right? So this is where it's important for us to know what the prophets told us because they explain these things to us. Some things are in detail and other things are general, but you can figure it out for yourself. You don't have to be a rocket scientist or a genius to know up from down, good from bad. And certainly that's uh, how Islam is bringing it, a very simple way that you can understand. We already talked about who the prophets are and who they're not, because we talked about the false prophets. A little bit more about the false prophets is that some of these false prophets, they're not real prophets, they wanted to make money from people or get control or power over them. And they told them that they were prophets, but they really weren't. Some guys even went more than that, and they said they were God. Remember we talked about Nimrud and how he told people he was God? What a guy. So I thought today I mentioned to you something about what happened to Nimrud. Now Abraham, peace be upon him, was having this argument with Nimrud about who is the... One, it gives life and death. And Abraham said, my Lord gives life and death. Nimrud did what? He brought some people, killed some, and let some go. He said, see, I give life and death. And you remember what 
Yeah, yeah. you remember <laughs> you remember what uh, Abraham said to him? He said, my Lord makes the sun come up in the east. Why don't you make it come up in the west? Oh, man, that was a good one. But Nimrud was a real case, you know. He had a problem. After Nimrud, you remember he threw him in the fire. He threw Abraham in the fire. Allah made the fire cool for him. Well, let me tell you what happened later. Nimrud was so really, really whacked, and he thought he had so much power, so Allah destroyed him in the coolest way. You know what Allah did? Allah made a teeny, tiny bug, a little bitty, like smaller than a mosquito, smaller than, a, you know, like a gnat, go inside of the ear of Nimrud. Nimrud's telling people he's the rub, the lord of the world. And he's a big shot. But Allah made a little bug go inside his ear. Creepy, 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 creep. Right down, right down to this tube that's right up against the brain. And right there, the bug bit him. <laughs> like that. And when the bug bit him, he was like, what? Oh my God, that hurt. What is that? Something in my head, oh, it hurts. And I'm sure it made a lot of noise too. I don't know, but I can imagine. Because I had something get in my ear one time and it was really painful. But this was worse. And it would go, and he'd be like, ah! So the people around him tried to help him. They didn't know what to do. And he was getting really angry. Do something, do something! Somebody said, what shall we do? And they were trying to do this and this. And finally somebody took a shoe. They used to wear wooden shoes. And they hit the side of Nimrud's head. Bam! With the shoe. Right up by his head. Bam! Like this, you know. And it stopped hurting. He said, ah, that's just right. I'm okay. I'm all right. And then the bug bit him again. Oh! Bam! They hit him with the shoe again. And then the bug bit him again. Ah! Bam! They hit him with the shoe again. And they kept biting him and hitting him and boom, bam, boom, until he died. That's how he died. And he said he was the Lord of the world. He said he was God. <laughs> Oh, by the way, God, you're dead. Hello. <laughs> this is stupid. You know what? We have a saying. I wonder. I don't know. We have a saying about don't bug me. I wonder if it has anything to do with being bugged to death. <laughs> I don't know. So we'll end as we started. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. In the name of Allah, Lord of all the worlds, there is no God but Him, the living and eternal. Allah, who ya Allah, who ya Allah. Abdul Rahim Green. Every single thing I had a doubt about Islam, Time proved it to be the truth. The same view. Prophet Muhammad is a prophet for everybody. So without following the prophet, you cannot get close to Yusuf Estes. It's not guidance from me, not guidance from you. It's guidance from Allah. Allah guides whom He wills. A missile to bring peace in the world. Peace missile. Next on Peace TV. The ultimate aim of education in Islam is to liberate you. Make you a liberated man and a woman because an educated mind cannot be fooled. An educated mind cannot be exploited. And Muhammad sallallahu will give the example. Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslimin wa muslim. Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every single Muslim. Neki ke liye sharte awal Allah par iman. Motivation. Love of God. Is ke siwa agar koi aur motiv hai, agar dunia mein shohrat chahiye. Agar us neki ke zariye se bhi maal kamane ka mamla hai, dhanda hai. Neki ke pardhe mein dhanda ho raha hai. Woh neki nahi hai. Chahe zahari hai, to baar se woh bohat badi neki ho.